The church is the Lord's kingdom on earth. The Lord's church exists wherever people live according to the precepts of charity. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. Be gracious unto us, O God, according to thy mercy. According to the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out our transgressions. Wash us thoroughly from our iniquity and cleanse us from our sins. For we acknowledge our transgressions and our sins are ever before us. O Lord, we pray that we may come to thee and worship thee alone, that we may become thy sons and may be called the sons of God. Our Father, who art in the heavens, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so upon the earth. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. O Lord, lead us to forgive men their trespasses, that thou mayest also forgive us. For if we forgive not men their trespasses, neither wilt thou forgive us our trespasses. Glory and might be unto him forever and ever. Amen. Who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Amen. A reading from the Word will be Psalm 15. Lord, who may abide in your tabernacle? Who may dwell in your holy hill? He who walks uprightly and does what is just and speaks the truth in his heart. He who does not backbite with his tongue, nor does evil to his neighbor, nor does he take up a reproach against his friend, in whose eyes a vile person is despised, but he honors those who fear the Lord. He who swears to his own hurt and does not change. He who does not put out his money at usury, nor does he take a bribe against the innocent. He who does these things shall never be moved. Amen. And our first lesson, our first reading, is from Micah, chapter 7. Woe is me, for I am like those who gather summer fruits, like those who glean vintage grapes. There is no cluster to eat of the first rate fruit which my soul desires. The faithful man has perished from the earth, and there is no one upright among men. They all lie in wait for blood. Every man hunts his brother with a net, that they may successfully do evil with both hands. The prince asks for gifts, the judge seeks a bribe, and the great man utters his evil desire. So they scheme together. The best of them is like a briar. The most upright is sharper than a thorn hedge. 
the day of your watchman and your punishment comes. Now shall, now shall be their perplexity. Do not trust in a friend. Do not put your confidence in a companion. Guard the doors of your mouth from her who lies in your bosom. For son dishonors father. Daughter rises up against her mother. Daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies are the men of his own household. Therefore, I will look to the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. Do not rejoice over me, my enemy. When I fall, I shall arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord will be a light to me. I will bear the indignation of the Lord because I have sinned against him until he pleads my case and executes judgment for me. He will bring me forth to the light and I will see his righteousness. Amen. Hear you further from the word of the Lord, as it is written in Matthew chapter 10, and then in Luke. Behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. Therefore, be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. But beware of men, for they will de deliver you up to councils and scourge you in their synagogues. You will be brought before governors and kings for my sake as a testimony to them and to the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, do not worry about how or what you should speak, for it will be given to you in that hour what you shall speak. For it is not you who speak, but the spirit of your father who speaks in you. Now brother will deliver brother to death and a father his child. And children will rise up against parents and cause them to be put to death. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake. But he who endures to the end will be saved. Therefore, whoever confesses me before men, him I will confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, him I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Do not think that I came to bring peace on earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's enemies will be those of his own household. He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he who does not take up his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. He who finds the life will lose it. And he who loses his life for my sake will find it. He who receives you receives me. And he who receives me, receives him who sent me. Do you suppose that I came to give peace on earth? 
I tell you, not at all, but rather division. For from now on, five in one house will be divided, three against two and two against three. Father will be divided against son and son against father, mother against daughter and daughter against mother, mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law and daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Amen. Hear you further from the word of the Lord, as it is written in the Arcana Celestia 10,490. And this is an explanation of the prior lessons that I was reading. A person who does not know that by brethren, companions, neighbors, and many other names of relationships, what they are sig- that, they are, that they signify goods and truths of the church and of heaven, and their opposites, which are evils and falsities, cannot know what is involved in many other passages in the word where these names occur, as in the following. Think not that I am come to send peace on the earth. I am not come to send peace, but a sword. For I am come to set a neighbor, a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's foes shall be those of his own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. It is spiritual combats that are here being treated of, which are temptations to be undergone by those who are to be regenerated. Thus, the contentions arising in a person between the evils and the falsities which are with him from hell and the goods and truths which are with him from the Lord. Because these combats are being described, it is said, whoever does not take up his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. By the cross is meant the state of a person when in temptations. One who does not know that such things are signified by man and father, by daughter and mother, by daughter-in-law and mother-in-law, must believe that the Lord came into the world in order to take away peace in homes and families and to introduce dissensions. And yet he came to give peace and take away dissensions. That it is the dissension of the internal and the external man that is being described in this passage is evident from the significations in the internal sense of man and father, of daughter and mother, of daughter-in-law and mother-in-law, in which sense man signifies the good which is from the Lord. Father denotes the evil which is from a person's proprium or love of self. Daughter means the affection for good and truth, while mother denotes the affection for evil and falsity. Daughter-in-law signifies the truth of the church adjoined to its good, and mother-in-law denotes falsity joined to its evil. 
Because the combat between goods and evils and between falsities and truths with a person is being described, it is also said that a man's foes shall be those of his own household. For by those of his own household is signified the things that belong to a person, thus which are his own. And foes, in a spiritual sense, mean the evils and falsities which assault goods and truths. Likewise, with regard to these words, brother shall deliver brother up to death, and the father, the son, and children shall rise up against their parents and shall give them to death, as in Matthew 10. If any man cometh unto me and hates not his father and mother and wife and children, and brothers and sisters, yea, and his own soul also, he cannot be my disciples. And whosoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Who does not see that these words are not to be understood according to the letter? At the very least, from the fact of its being said without restriction, that father, mother, wife, children, brothers, sisters are to be hated in order that it may be possible for a person to be a disciple of the Lord. And yet it is according to the Lord's commandments that no one is to be hated, not even an enemy. It is evident that things belonging to a person which are evils and falsities in their order, are meant by these names. For it is also said that he must hate his own soul, and that he must renounce all that he has, that is, the things that belong to him. A state of temptation, that is, of spiritual combat, is here being described. For it is said, Whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. To be a disciple of the Lord is to be led by him and not by self. Thus, by the goods and truths which are from the Lord and not by the evils and falsities which are from the person. Amen. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Do not think that I came to bring, to bring peace on earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword, Matthew chapter 10. In the sermon last week, we noted the relationship between justice and peace, namely that the effect of justice will be peace. We pointed out that justice is described by the second of the two great commandments, that is, treating others as we ourselves would like to be treated. And we quoted from the prophet Isaiah where he said, my people shall dwell in a peaceful habitation, in secure dwellings and in quiet places of rest. Now we read the words of the Lord in Matthew that he did not come to bring, to bring peace on earth, but a sword. And in the Gospel of Luke, the Lord said, Do you suppose that I came to give peace on earth? I tell you, not at all, but rather division. The Lord said these things, but isn't he the Prince of Peace? Didn't he also tell his disciples to have peace with one another? He greeted his disciples saying, peace be to you. 
he told them, peace, I live with you. My peace, I give to you. Not as the world do I give to you. And also, these things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So which group of the Lord's statements are we to believe? Are we to believe his statements about peace? Or his statements about sowing division and bringing a sword? Perhaps we can sympathize with the Lord's disciples sometimes being confused by what the Lord was saying. For example, listen to this conversation between the Lord and his disciples from the Gospel of John. The Lord said, a little while and you will not see me. And again, a little while and you will see me because I go to the Father. Then some of his disciples said among themselves, what is this that he is saying to us? A little while and you will not see me. And again, a little while and you will see me. And because I go to the Father. They said, therefore, what is this that he, is, he says a little while? We do not know what he is saying. Now Jesus knew that they desired to ask him, and he said to them, Are you inquiring among yourselves what I said? A little while, and you will not see me. And again a little while, and you will see me. These things I have spoken to you in figurative language. But the time is coming when I will no longer speak to you in figurative language. But I will tell you plainly about the Father. His disciples said to him, See, now you are speaking plainly and using no figure of speech. Now we are sure that you know all things and have no need that anyone should question you. By this we believe that you came forth from God, from John chapter 6. And yet, despite what the disciples said, they did not fully comprehend what the Lord was saying to them. They did not really understand what he was saying about going to the Father, nor could they. Everything that the Lord said was in the form of a parable. It had a deeper and often hidden meaning. As it is written in Matthew, all these things Jesus spoke to the multitudes in parables. And without a parable, he did not speak to them. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, I open my mouth in parables. Matthew chapter 13. Even to his disciples, the Lord spoke mostly in parables or figurative language. In a few places, he spoke openly and plainly, such as when he told them that I and the Father are, are one, and that he who sees me sees the Father. And yet, even these plain statements contain deeper levels of meaning and truth. Everything the Lord said holds a deeper meaning. So also with the Lord's teachings about bringing a sword into vision and not peace. This was explained most clearly in the Arcana Celestia 10,490. To summarize those teachings, spiritual combats or temptations are being treated of. Thus, the contentions arising in a person between the evils and falsities which are with him from hell and the goods and truths which are with him from the Lord. 
the passage tells us that he who does not know that such things are signified by man and father, by daughter and mother, by daughter-in-law and mother-in-law, must believe that the Lord came into the world in order to take away peace in homes and families and introduce dissension, when yet he came to give peace and take away dissensions. That it is the dissension of the internal and external man that is described in this passage is evident from the signification in the internal sense of man and father, of daughter and mother, of daughter-in-law and mother-in-law, in which sense man denotes the good which is from the Lord. Father denotes the evil which is from man's proprium. Daughter signifies the affection of good and truth. Mother, the affection of evil and falsity. Daughter-in-law denotes the truth of the church adjoined to its good, while mother-in-law denotes falsity adjoined to its evil. Because the combat between goods and evils and between falsities and truths with a person is described, it is also said that a man's foes should be those of his own household. For by those of his own household is signified the things that belong to a person, thus which are his own. And foes in a spiritual sense mean the evils and falsities which assault goods and truths, Arcana Celestia 10,490. The Lord was illustrating the dissensions and combats within a person in terms of dissensions and combats within an apparently dysfunctional family. And these are the dissensions and combats taking place within a person who is being regenerated by the Lord. This is why the Lord referred to bringing a sword in division and not peace. For by means of the sword of truth, and a sword represents truth combating, a person may be gradually regenerated by the Lord. So this dissension and combat are those taking place within the mind and soul of one person. If we are following the Lord and being regenerated by him, that dysfunctional combative family is the family of our mind. It's all there taking place within us. We are both the good man and the evil father the good being what is from the Lord with us, and the evil being the proprium or love of self with us. The daughter is the affection for good and truth within us, while the mother within us is the affection for evil and falsity. Likewise, the daughter-in-law and the mother-in-law all signify states of good and truth as well as states of evil and falsity within us. And these opposing states are at war with each other in spiritual combat. But how do we know this? We know this and may choose to believe this because the Third Testament tells us so. Without the Third Testament, we, like the disciples, would likely also be questioning what the Lord is saying. And when seeing contradictory sets of teachings, say to ourselves, we do not know what he is saying. But when we read the descriptions and explanations in the Third Testament, of difficult passages like this one in the New Testament, we may say to ourselves, see, now you are speaking plainly and using no figure of speech. 
But let us approach our knowledge and understanding of the word with a sense of humility. Keep in mind that in all three testaments of the Lord's word, there are deeper levels within levels of meaning. There are always parables containing deeper truths. So what we see is like a drop of water within an ocean. But how do we know if that drop is true? It is taught that we shall know the truth and the truth shall make us free. And how do we know if that truth is in fact true? Well, that whole passage from John chapter eight gives us an answer. If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Abiding in the Lord's word means living according to the Lord's word as we understand it. And that is all that the Lord really asks of us. Abide in his word, live according to it, and the Lord will lead us to spiritual peace and freedom. Amen. And now to the one only God, Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. And now, O oh Lord, may we go out with joy and be led forth in peace. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen.